My name is Yurit. My parents raised me in an urban lifestyle very far from nature. In May 2002, my husband, our daughter, and I settled in Oroville, an international township in southern India. We were following our hearts, trying to explore different ways of living. On December 19, 2003, we slept for the first night on the land that would become Sadna Forest. I'll never forget that night. I was so excited I couldn't fall asleep. We were living in a scrap bullet cart. It was pure magic. This book contains short stories from our first 12 years in Sadna Forest. I want very much to share these stories with you because many people know a lot about Sadna Forest, but not everyone knows that there is a little family behind it all, simply living their lives. Thank you. Squatting on the Toilet Early Morning Squatting on the toilet early morning, this is one of my favorite moments of the day. Most of the universe is still and silent. Birds are talking to each other, bright and shining leaves are moving gently, bring drops of morning dew. The lizards are chasing bugs in the grass, and I can feel the freshness of the air. My heart fills with peace and beauty. Looking to my left, the sun is peeping through the trees. Looking in front of me, there's a beautiful picture of a thick forest. Magical moment. I close my eyes and I open them, and then I close my eyes and open them again, and again, and again. I can't believe the sight in front of my eyes. This is a real piece of forest. And I was always afraid that the trees would never grow. Doors. Shalev was a small girl, maybe three years old, when we came back home after spending a few days resting at Park Guest House in Pondicherry. She had a request. Ima. Mama in Hebrew. Can you make us a door to our hut? Hmm. Interesting. Why do you want a door? I want to open the door and shut the door when I come home. I want to hear the sound of the door. Boom! I want the mosquitoes to stay out. I want a door. Please, please, Ima, make me a door. I paused. I needed to think about it. What should I answer this little one who simply wants a door to open and close? A door. Hmm. A door. I think I never gave her an answer. I didn't have a good one at that time. I thought she would slowly figure it out by herself. In the end, struggling, lifting up and down the mosquito net of our bed, running like a rabbit in and out from the hut 20 times a day, turned out to be enough for her. She gave up on the idea of opening and closing a door and never mentioned it again. Now when I think about it, I realize that one of the main features of our structures in Sadna Forest is having no doors. We simply opened our house and never shut the door behind us. Swami's phone call. One week ago, when I was already in my bed, when the girls were falling asleep and Aviram was giving a talk in the main hut about Sadna Forest values, my shiny yellow phone rang. I answered. On the other end was Swami. Swami was our first watchman. He came with us to the land when the land was completely empty. His real name is Kupusami, but everyone calls him Swami. Yorit! Good evening, mm. Swami, is it you? Yes, Swami. Night watchman not coming. Balu calling, Aviram answer, no. One minute, I didn't get it. Then Swami, trying to speak more slowly. Night watchman coming, no. Aviram calling, answer, no. Balu calling, answer, no. Swami calling your it. Oh, I've got it. You tried to call Balu or Aviram to let them know that the night watchman's not coming today? Yes, yes. Do you know why? Watchman eating sadhana food. He like too much. Eating, eating, no stop eating. 
after stomach problem, after hospital going. While telling me the story about the watchman, Swami started laughing so strongly that I couldn't stay calm and joined his laugh. <laughs> trying not to wake up the girls. It was so funny. And Swami was repeating himself again and again. Watchman eating, eating too much. Like sadhana forest food, too much. And just for your knowledge, most local people will not always be so enthusiastic about brown rice and dal. I tried to finish the conversation, but couldn't stop laughing, while Swami on the other side of the phone couldn't stop laughing either. Okay, Swami, no problem. I I'll see you tomorrow morning. Good night. Swami is trying to say good night, with his mouth full of laughter. The next morning on the side entrance of the main hut, Swami's eyes met my eyes, and we couldn't hold it. We started laughing. Looking at each other made our laughter even stronger. While writing this story for you, I'm also laughing remembering Swami's descriptions of the new watchman overeating. And it's not only about having a good joke. It's about a moment of unity and joy. Hi, it's me again. I'm not going to tell you another story, but if you do want to hear more, you are most welcome to download my book from our website. This is a gift from me to you. Enjoy. <laughs>